Hey there! The Architettura. Today, we're going to have a look at the Architect Nib. Why? Because. Uh, because there's actually a good reason to do that. So a lot of people have asked me about Architect Nibs, and Architect Nibs are quite popular at this moment, I would say. So I thought what I would do is give you a very, very quick, short as I can make it, rundown of the Architect Nib, and then we will, I'll do a writing sample, and you can, you can see a bit more about it. So an Architect Nib also known as a Hebrew grind, and sometimes you see an Arabic grind. Although that you don't see so much, I, I feel, but in, in some, some, uh, some texts I have, I have seen that. It's a very interesting nib shape, and I will show you a close-up of the nib when, I'm, when I tilt the camera down. But in a nutshell, what it does is the opposite of an italic nib. So, <clears throat> and I'll show you the two side by side. A normal round, <coughs> sorry, a normal round nib. So the nibs you find on most pens are fine, medium, or broad, whatever. But but ground roundly, a round ball of tipping, right? Will kind of have the same line width in every direction you write because the the tipping at the end of the nib that touches the paper is round, right? In an italic nib. It's ground in a more squarish fashion, and then there are different kinds, as a crisp italic and a cursive italic. And but but for now, let's just keep it very simple. An italic nib is basically a block of tipping, and that uh, it's it's more squarish. And the advantage of that is that when you go down, so on the down stroke you get a rather wide line, but on the side stroke you get a very thin, fine line. Right? That's what an italic nib does. But then you have an architect nib. An architect nib is pretty much the opposite of a cursive nib. So if you would sort of put a curve, cur cursive nib on its side, then you would get an architect nib. So an architect has a thin downstroke, but a broad side stroke. And that is why you also here to refer to those nibs as Hebrew or Arabic, because for those scripts, when you write them, that kind of brings out the, 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 the beauty of the characters in those alphabets. In the West, where we use the Roman alphabet, in my mind, an architect nib only really makes sense if you write in print. If you write in cursive, you will not get many benefits out of having an architect grind. However, they can still be fun for artistic purposes, for sort of fiddling around with. If you want to add a little bit of fun to a print message, uh, you can use them. And I use them, I also use them for cursive, which works fine. It's just that you won't see a whole lot of difference, I would say, between a round nib and um, an architect grind. So, the best thing to do is not to talk forever, but just show you this type of nib in action. So what I have here is uh, a classic pens LM1. This came with an italic nib. I have the italic nib for it, but a very kind viewer sent me a very broad nib for this pen, which was a regular broad, but it had an enormous ball of tipping. And I liked that nib a lot, but at some point I thought maybe I should jump on the architect bandwagon, so I went to my friend Salmon <coughs> of the Toronto Pen Company and uh, I asked him if he could grind that nib into an architect nib and he told me that when he was doing it he had a giant smile on his face because it was such a lovely nib to work with. Again, it was massive tipping. You can see, I think there must be a video somewhere where I show you how that nib wrote before it was ground, but now it is an architect. Now what I'm going to do when I point the camera down is I'll take out a loop and I'll show it you up close, but this is the very nib. Okay, so that's the pen, now you know, because otherwise people will ask me. Classic Pens LM1 with a broad nib, but you cannot buy this as an architect. In fact, I don't really know of any uh, nibs, like architect nibs, you can buy commercially. Naginata Togi, maybe. Zoom nib, maybe. But, I don't know. I think if you really want to have an actual architect nib, you probably have to go to a nibmeister. 
a Nibmeister, and now I have to explain that because otherwise people ask me about that. Who is a Nibmeister? That is a person who can grind or customize nibs for you. I just mentioned Salmon of the Toronto Pen Company, he is very good. Mike Masayama of Mike at Work is very good. Um, uh, who else do we have? Dan Smith, the Nib Smith, is very good. Uh, Mark Bacchus, uh, is he the nib grinder? It's painful, but I forgot. But in any case, Mark Bacchus, with a C, B-A-C-A-S, is very good. So there are a lot of nib masters available, most of them in North America. If you want someone in Europe, because people will ask me that too, there is John Soroka, who is on the Fountain Pen Network as Oxonian, with an X, Oxonian. He has no website, so if you want to uh, deal with him, you have to contact him through Fountain Pen Network. I have used Nibs, he has ground, he does excellent work too. So there are options, but beyond that, you're going to have to figure out who is closest to you and who you would pick, okay? Now, end of the talk, let's see this pen in action. Okay, so I thought what I would do is um, first show you some of these nibs up close and then do a writing sample which again I think is the most relevant thing here so so let's start here we have a round nib and uh, you you'll see I definitely need to clean my loop huh and um, you, you you'll see oh now I definitely need to clean my loop and um, <laughs> you you see why it's it's called a a round nib okay focus there we go right because the tipping is round right this is a twisby go and it's it's completely rounded off tipping okay now let's look at an italic nib that I was talking about earlier so here we have a Danitrio oh, this is harder than I thought it was but anyway uh, here we have <laughs> Okay, more, more staining on my, my loop. Here we have a Denitrio. There we go. Italic nib, which you can see is much more square, right? <laughs> Squared off. And another stain on my loop. So, we have that. Squared off. Now, final thing we then have is the architect grind and the architect grind is pretty special you can see that looks really different right an interesting taper but also this very interesting flat uh, flatness there and this sort of iron like a, like uh, iron you use for your clothes uh, type shape right at the bottom now I can do this all day and show you all these shapes but I again I think that the best thing to do is just show you how this works side by side so if we start with that round nib just very quickly um, because you, I'm, I'm sure you know what what this uh, writes like here we have a Twisby go with a uh, it's a Robert Osterink and I forgot which one it's also not very relevant because it's not an ink review uh, so the the idea here is that you have a round nib which no matter what direction you go in right it's it, it gives you the same line width in each and every direction and that means that you can do a print as I did for the name Twisby go right or you can do uh, cursive writing right and it will all it will all work it'll all work now if we compare this to an italic nib so here we have a Denitrio Mikado right so this would be an italic nib oops that was my fault not the nibs here you see that you get a broad diagonal going down a fine diagonal 
right? If I go in the other direction, now if I actually align this properly to the paper, the downstroke will be wide, and this has nothing to do with pressure, that's just because of that squarish tipping. And the side stroke will also be fine, right? So we have broad, narrow, narrow, broad, right? Broad, narrow, broad, narrow. Okay, now you can do, of course, you can here too, write in print, and what you see is that the down strokes are wide, the side strokes, like this, are narrow, right? You can also use this for gursive, right? That works very well too. Or you can use this one for very simple calligraphy, right? Because many calligraphic, Western calligraphic scripts, I should say, depend on this type of nib shape. So you can use that. But then you have that final product that everybody is lusting after if we check out social media and that would be the architect grind. So here we have a classic pens LM1 and this would be an architect. Now as you can see, I'm using cursive because I wrote the other names in cursive as well. And as you can see right here, let me zoom out a tiny bit. Uh, here you can see that this just looks like a giant fat nib, right? But now let's look at what happens in our, our little comparison. So this diagonal arm is, is uh, relatively wide. This diagonal arm is definitely wide. The straight down is relatively narrow, and the side to side, the horizontal, is broad, right? So we have broad, narrow, fine, broad, fine, broad, fine, broad. And that makes for a very interesting uh, um, option when you use print. because what you see is I get the exact opposite of the italic nib. Now I have a fine downstroke and a broad side stroke, a broad horizontal stroke. Horizo so yes, horizontal, broad as opposed to fine for the italic. Now if I move to cursive, this effect is not so pronounced, okay? You also, this being so broad, you really have to write large with this pen. It doesn't work if you don't write largely. It's, it's, it, it just, it's, it's too, so if you have tiny handwriting, it will not be legible, right? That says tiny. Now, what about this calligraphic stuff? Well, you get the exact opposite of what you're looking for if you try to do Western calligraphy. Right, this is where I want this to be wide, it's narrow. Where I want this to be narrow, it's wide. If, on the other hand, I try to write in Arabic, that suddenly looks a lot better. And I'm sorry, I do not write in Arabic. So, or Hebrew, right? Same thing, I, 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 can't, do, I, I can't do Hebrew. So I, 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 this is not meant in any way offensively, but like Hebrew has a lot of these lovely um, um, sort of shapes like this. Again, I can't do it, right? So I'm just making this up on the spot, but that is very cool. This is also, this is not Hebrew, but you see that this is meant for this type of writing, okay? Again, people, no offense meant, I just, I just can't do it, so I have to fantasize about this. That is, in a nutshell, the difference. So the biggest difference that we can point out is our architect, fine downstroke, fine, you could say, vertical stroke, broad horizontal stroke. Whereas with the italic, broad downstroke, fine 
side stroke. Okay, there you have it. Now, just in case you're interested and you say, I want exactly this type of cursive nib, well, this type of cursive nib has, sorry, this type of italic nib. Okay, focus. This type of architect nib, that's what we were talking about. I'm so sorry. This one was ground by the Toronto Pen Company, and Salmon, in my mind, has done a great job with this. If you want one, uh, you have to send in your pen. It's on their website, Toronto Pen Company. I'll link to it in the description of the video and on the website. The uh, um, Architect Grind is $45. That is Canadian, not US, because it's Toronto Pen Company, it's in Canada. The fun thing about this nib is that it has an extra trick up its sleeve, because if there is enough tipping, Salmon can also make it right upside down. So I have an Architect, but when I turn it upside down, I have a medium nib. Now this costs $75, because now he basically grinds it on both ends, right? So the price goes up. But now, if this is too much for everyday writing, you can turn it upside down, and you can just write with it like this. And you have a normal medium, sort of fine medium nib, which I think is very useful. So, you can also get that grind, and then your nib swings both ways. Okay. Hope this was useful, this overview, and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.